energy savvy sun wranglers this is no ordinary chainsaw this is a solar powered chainsaw cutting edge college kids are we creating a giant easy bake oven is that what's going on? A bake oven. I don't know what the easy part. <laughs> and a man with a vision for the future. We're going to be without oil at some point. And the sooner we try and create the new infrastructure, the sooner we have a chance to have a life after oil. It's a revolutionary solution that's right outside your door. That's quite a power plant. You bet. <laughs> Radical rides, cutthroat competition, and outside of the box technology. We may be running out of gas, but we're not running out of fuel. I'm Jonathan Levin, and I'm on a quest for the leanest, meanest, and greenest wheels. Grab your sunscreen, because on today's episode, everything is powered by the sun. I'm in Northern California with solar guru Steve Heckeroth to find out how to fuel my wheels with nothing more than solar rays. Steve, you are the epitome of green, if you ask me. I'm trying. <laughs> you, you power your entire home and your grounds using solar power. You drive using a solar electric car. You harvest your own food using a solar electric tractor. And even your home has been built in such a way to maximize solar power and solar efficiency. It's the only energy resource that is pretty much unlimited. There's uh, thousands, millions of times more solar energy striking the Earth than we actually need. If we can capture even a small portion of that, we can satisfy all our energy needs. Steve and his wife, Christiana, have committed their lives to living without fossil fuels, all with the help of one very elegant invention. This is it. This is it. This is, this is thin film photovoltaic material. Sounds a little dangerous. <laughs> it's light is photo and voltaic is electricity. Solar electricity. Photovoltaic power may sound scary, but the technology is actually quite simple. This is a little solar panel. Okay, so this, this is what is on here. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't know what form of magic this is. Uh, that's cool. This, this thin film material is just amazing, the energy it produces. But what I want to know is, how exactly does the sun's energy get absorbed by the photovoltaic material? The photons come in, and they find a place to rest. And they actually get pushed through a barrier. And that's when the circuit is made. What's pulling those electrons out? Well, when you have a load, it's like a hose, you know? When you've turned it off, there's no flow. When you turn it on, when there's something, some place for it to go, it'll move. The electrons travel as direct current into a charge controller, where it's converted into alternating current and is stored in lead-acid batteries housed in the barn. Yeah, this is enough to power our house for about four or five days. And this meter shows in kilowatts how much energy the photovoltaic panels are gathering. Yeah, you can watch the clouds go by it'll drop when a cloud comes by it'll drop below uh, a one kilowatt and when it's in full sun it'll go up to uh, three kilowatts but how do kilowatts translate into the amount of energy we use every day the average person used to use about 20 kilowatt hours a day you know 20 30 years ago um, and that's been rising uh, because of all the gadgets we have and and uh, big screen TVs and whatever so it's probably closer to 30, 40 kilowatt hours a day now. But that's just in our home. On our cars, that's a whole nother story. We use much more energy in our cars than we do in our homes. If you use more than a gallon worth of gasoline a day, you're using more energy in your car than you are in your house. That puts it in perspective. That's something that everybody has to realize, is that we are using so much energy for transportation compared to everything else we do. But Steve's got an electric car that he charges with the energy created by his rooftop solar array. So it's 100% emission free and doesn't cost a thing. That's it? That's it. 
It'll start up in a second. There's no electricity flowing. Now you hear it. Oh, yeah, I hear it, I hear it going. Yeah. So the electric, that's it. That's it. Charging the car is easy as pie. The hard part's getting a hold of an electric vehicle in the first place. They only made, they only sold it in 2002 for a very short period of time. And as soon as the zero emission mandate went away in California, they pulled it off the market. And at that time, they'd only sold about 200 of them. So these are rare. These are very rare. And the whole argument from the auto industry that there was no, you know, there wasn't that much demand. Um, these things, I paid 29000 for it, new, and they are selling on eBay for 65000 now. It just doesn't make sense. There must be some sort of downside. What about the, the argument that uh, batteries are not recyclable and, and what do we do with them? They're dangerous and the lead is dangerous to the environment. What about that argument? These are nickel metal hydride batteries and all the new batteries are, again, totally non-toxic. The batteries in this car has 66,000 miles on it without any maintenance at all. We haven't even put new washer fluid in it, I don't think. Can I see what's going on under the hood here? Yeah, you know, I haven't popped the hood more than once or twice because you yeah. don't need to check oil. There's nothing, nothing you need to do under the hood. But for you, I'll pop the hood. Well, don't you want to know what's going on <laughs> under there? Twice. Yeah. This is not the normal thing you'd see when you open a car. This is inside here is the inverter. All the nickel metal hydride batteries are under the floor. None of the cab space is used for that. And the center of gravity is an 800 pound battery pack all under the floorboards. About as low a center of gravity as you could want. It's this is not flipping over? No, it's absolutely not. It's very stable on the road. I mean, how much power do I really get in this car? It goes 85 on the freeway when we ever get over that way, but it'll go up any hill that we've run into. I think it's about time I take this baby out for a spin. This is great, nice and smooth. That's the other thing, you're not, you're not making a disturbance in the environment or the community with the noise of your car. Right. Nice and quiet. Yeah, all you hear is the tires on the road. Steve's electric RAV4 rocks. It drives great, it's economical, and it's got all the amenities of a regular car. So I'm still trying to figure out why we all aren't driving them. So cost is great, power is great, uh, it's quiet, it's zero emissions. Zero right? emissions, and except for the power plant. But if you plug it into the sun, like we do, then it's totally zero. So the only argument that we can think of at this point to not go electric is range. And this one that was discontinued with an old battery gets you, what's your range on it? 80 to 100 miles. Which is more than most people need. Why are we not going electric? Because the oil companies are in control and they've figured out that the way, best way for them to make a lot of money is to sell a lot of big vehicles so that people are totally tied to oil and they have no choice. Hopefully the day will come when electric vehicles like Steve's are easy to come by. Or even better, what if there was a solar car that didn't need to be plugged in at all?